A lot of people want to hop off that great speeding train of mathematics around this time. When you get to Algebra and Algebra 2 and you're dealing with these quadratic equations, stuff starts to become a bit of a headache. If you get a hang of factoring, solving quadratics can be really easy, but then they introduce these quadratic equations where the leading coefficient isn't 1, and this can slow down your process considerably. And I just saw this trick today for solving quadratic equations that apparently the instructor described as illegal because emotionally that's how it feels. But in fact, this snappy trick which completely gets rid of that leading coefficient is totally legal. Mathematically, it is valid and I'll show you why. First, let me show you the trick. Consider this quadratic equation. I'm just using P here instead of X because P stands for pretty cool trick. You can see that the leading coefficient isn't 1. Instead, it is 6. And that makes the factoring a little bit more difficult. When the leading coefficient is a composite number like 6, which has a ton of factors, 1, um, 2, there's uh, 3 as well, you have to do a lot of guessing and checking potentially. For example, I might try factoring this into uh, 6p plus 3 times p plus 3. 6p times p will give me that 6p squared, but if I check the rest of the details here, it's not going to work out. 6p times 3 is 18p plus another 3p, well, that's 21p, that does not work. All right, so no dice there. Then we have to come up with another idea. Maybe we try 3p minus 3 and 2p minus 3. Ah, uh, but that's a dumb idea because this is just going to give us... Ah, uh, but that's a dumb idea because these numbers are both negative, which means we're going to have a negative p term in the middle. Okay, so that doesn't work either. After enough attempts charging forth with the heart of a lion, you may arrive at the correct factorization, but the guessing and checking is a bit of a pain. So here's what you can do instead with our pretty cool trick. All we have to do is take that pesky leading coefficient and hit the constant term with it. Multiplying that constant 9 by that coefficient of 6 will give us 54. So then our new equation is going to be p, let's say prime squared, because we are now changing the equation, so I'm just going to call it p prime, plus 15 p prime plus 9 times 6, which is 54, and this is equal to 0. So again, just multiply that constant term by the leading coefficient, that gives us 54, our new constant term, and now we can use a leading coefficient of 1. The benefit is that this is just easier to factor now that the leading coefficient is 1. So to factor this, we're going to have p prime something times p prime something equals 0. Well, we know these numbers have to multiply to positive 54, so how about 9 and 6? 9 and 6 add to 15 in the middle, so indeed that's exactly what we are looking for. So then by the zero product property, we have that p prime equals negative 9 or p prime equals negative 6. Then to get the values of p that we actually want, just take the values of p prime and divide by that original leading coefficient that we previously multiplied by. So what are our values for p? Well, it's going to be negative 9 divided by 6 and a negative 6 divided by 6. Negative 9 divided by 6 reduces to negative 3 over 2, and negative 6 over 6 is negative 1. If there are actually any Algebra 2 students watching this video, I know you guys like decimals a lot, so if you want, yes, you could say negative 3 over 2 is negative 1.5. It makes me a little sick, but you could say it. All right, gang, let's try one more example before we see why this works. Again, we don't have a leading coefficient of 1 here. We have a leading coefficient of 4. That's a composite number with a bunch of factors like 1 and um, 2 and so on. So if we were trying to factor this, we might have to do some guessing and checking. So what we do for the pretty cool trick is take that leading coefficient of 4 and hit the constant term with it. Now we get to use a leading coefficient of 1, but we want to be careful to make sure that we understand the variable now is different. Let's call it x prime. So x prime squared minus 9x prime plus 2 times that leading coefficient of 4, so plus 8 equals 0. And then we just factor this bad Larry, which is cake city, frankly. This is very easy to factor. What two numbers multiply to positive 8? 
and add to negative nine, well, that would be negative eight and negative one. They multiply to positive eight and they add to negative nine. So that is the correct factorization. So by the zero product property, what are the values of X prime? Well, it would be positive eight and positive one. Then to find the values of X that we are actually looking for, we just take the values of X prime and divide by that original leading coefficient of four. Eight divided by four is two, and one divided by four is one over four. Is that a snappy trick or what? Now, why does this pretty cool trick work? Well, it's easy to see if you know the quadratic formula. Let us write just a general quadratic equation. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. The quadratic formula then tells us that X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC divided by 2A provided that a is not equal to zero. Of course, if a is zero, we don't actually have a quadratic. Now let's just see what happens when we hit that c with this factor of a and solve that slightly modified quadratic. This is how we find those values for x prime. The negative b doesn't change. Of course, that middle term is not affected by this illegal trick. So we also still have b squared inside the square root and then minus minus four times the a, the leading coefficient, is changed to one. So in essence, the a is divided by itself. a divided by a is one. The c, that constant term, of course, is multiplied by a. So instead of just multiplied by c, well, the new c is a times c. And then the 2a in the denominator, well, again, the leading coefficient of a has been changed to a divided by a so that it's 1. So these are the values for x prime. Notice that we're dividing by division by a, and that's the same as multiplying by a. For example, 2 divided by division by 2 is 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. One half goes into two four times. So this division by division by A is just multiplication by A. So rewriting this, the whole thing is getting multiplied by A, and then I'll put the rest in parentheses. The rest being negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four times. A over A is just one, so we don't really have to write that. And then also getting multiplied by AC. So in total, minus four times one, times AC. And then what's in the denominator? Well, now it's just 2A. There was division by A, but because that's in the denominator, that's just multiplication, which we've put out front. So now all that's in the denominator is 2A. And does that look familiar? Well, yes, that's just the quadratic formula. These are the values of X. So how does X prime relate to X? It's just the values of X exactly but multiplied by that leading coefficient of a. That's why the final step when using this trick is to divide by the leading coefficient. We have to divide by it so that we're left with the original solutions, the values of x that we're actually looking for. Here at the end, we divided by the leading coefficient of four. And in that first example, we divided by the leading coefficient of six. And now you can see why. Does it feel illegal? Well, maybe a little bit, but does it also feel powerful? Oh, you bet your bippy it does. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and unsort the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal. Wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm traded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull the brain and push it all the way through the whole blue planet. Faded. Psycho, 